Hello and welcome to this session on why every student should learn to code. I am Meryl van der Merwe and I have been coding since I was in high school, which as you can see was a very long time ago. Before I get into my talk, let me just tell you a little about myself. I um, grew up in South Africa and I started coding when I was a high schooler. Our school offered it, but not on the school premises. There was just one school in our town that offered it one Monday afternoon and I had to catch a bus to go there and to start to learn to code. We would literally write down the code on paper, send it in, and somebody would type it up for us and run our program and then we'd get information next week whether it actually worked or not. So very clumsy. My dad also realized the importance of computers and bought us um, one as soon as they started coming into South Africa, which was a little while after America. And so between the two things, I started learning to code and uh, I went to college and actually studied English and German, nothing to do with uh, programming or STEM at all. But um, during the vacations, my um, now husband, then boyfriend and I, and my siblings started running computer camps to teach others to learn to program. Uh, PCs and um, Macs had just started coming into South Africa and we had a little bit more programming knowledge than anyone else. So we decided, well, let's, this is a way to make money. And so we did. And so programming has always been important to me and to my family. My dad is an um, electrical uh, engineer and he did understand that computers were going to be part of our lives going forward. And so he encouraged us all to learn coding skills. I only did one coding class at college, but I ended up working as a programmer at Shell. And after I stopped working there, I did start running my own business alongside my husband and I was doing coding again. When we moved to America, this is like now 15 years ago, we started homeschooling. And of course, as soon as my children, well, they were old enough, I started teaching them to code as well. Then I discovered that most other homeschool moms didn't have a clue how to code. So I started teaching at our, at our co-op and eventually I now teach online as well. I have realized over time that coding has become more and more important and yet there are still so many people who don't realize that coding is not an option for children, but they really do need to learn coding and the earlier the better. So now let me move over onto my uh, slides and take you through them and share some of the reasons why I believe every child should learn to code. I'm going to take you through three different quotes for the three main reasons why I think everyone should learn to code, not just students, everybody. And um, then I will elaborate a little more on each idea. So the first one is to be prepared for the demands of the 21st century and to take advantage of its opportunities. It is essential that more of our students today learn basic computer programming skills, no matter what field of work they want to pursue. I realized this more than ever when my oldest daughter sent me a text one day. She is a PhD student in media and communications who I struggled to get to do any coding when she was a teen, but I did make her learn some basic programming so that if she ever needed it, she'd have it. Well, she sent me a picture of code and she said, look, mom, see what I'm doing. I never expected her to actually code. Why would she? You know, she had studied film as an undergrad and now she was looking at media. But the truth was she had data that she literally had a crunch. She needed to actually write a little program to deal with the data. It was a very simple programming language that they were using to actually work with the research, but she needed to do it. And since then, she has now actually been using Python to access movie databases and um, draw out the information that she needs. So there is somebody who has not gone into a field that has anything to do with computers, and yet she's had to learn to use it. I want to take you into two articles and just read you a little bit from um, these articles to see what other people are saying. Sorry, we have a new house and the internet is slow. Um, I just want to go down here to the parts. Here we go. I'm reading from the sec just the second paragraph here. This high number is thanks talking about people who are studying um, computers in part due to the fact that it's not just technology, technology 
technology jobs that now require at least some coding knowledge, says Alison Durbinwick Miller, the vice president of Oracle Academy. Computing has become a tool in every industry, which means that coding knowledge is now needed for workers across fields, she says. Indeed, everyone from business people who work with data to designers and marketers who create websites to scientists who conduct research now need at least some coding knowledge. Employers and employees, even those who aren't in the technology field, say the same. Jake Lane, a growth analyst at Lawn Care Company Lawn Starter, says that having some knowledge of coding is essential for job seekers these days, as it can help them understand the tasks of and work more effectively with other departments, including their tech and engineering teams. So, as you can see, the first thing is, is simply that you may be needing to code for um, your own job, but even if you're not doing much coding yourself, you're going to be working with people who are. And how are you going to be able to speak their language to understand what they're telling you if nothing makes any sense to you? And, you know, you need to prepare your children for the fact that they are living in the 21st century. When they go off to college and beyond, everything is going to keep on changing. Code is not going to go away. Our world is not going to become less technological. And it's highly unlikely that at some point they're not going to meet up with coding. So why not start them when they're young and just give them that, that opportunity? Sorry, screen here. Now, I want to take you into this infographic, which is about EU countries, but you'll see that we have things to learn ourselves, and a lot of it is very similar. Um, you can see here that, sorry, yet again, it's just the... Uh, internet taking its time here. But on this thing, they said that digital competencies and ICT skills are seen as key for young people to integrate in the job market because so many jobs today will require at least low level skills. Um, and here just in Europe, they're expecting by next year to see a shortage of more than 800,000 professionals with computing skills. And it is the same um, in America, I'm not sure what the exact numbers here, but we are also seeing a bigger and bigger gap between um, people who are coming out with the correct amount of computing skills and those who don't. So it's it's a huge area for uh, for students to go into because they can be sure that they'll find a job at the other end. Um, you can see that now more and more are actually starting to integrate in schools. America has been a little slower than many parts of the world, but slowly now in many states you are starting to see it integrating at different levels. Obviously, ideally, you want to start very young. And we're going to come back to this later, but you can see here that it says coding is not just for computer geeks, but it actually helps develop logical thinking skills and problem-solving skills. Here are some uh, fairly recent job statistics, and um, there will be a handout that goes along with this, so look out for that, and I will have links to some of these uh, websites and articles that I mentioned that you can take a look at yourselves. Coding jobs just pay more. You can see here from the stats that they pay a lot more if somebody has coding skills, even if they're not using them a lot in their job, they're likely to earn more. Um, secondly, these say the higher paying jobs are, are typically those, the ones in the higher quartile, are those that do require coding skills. And um, finally, that the programming jobs are the fastest growing in the market. And so you can be sure that if your child goes off to college and studies computer programming, they will get a job. In fact, you can see here that it says 47% of people in the US in the next 20 years are likely to have their jobs automated. So at this stage, you'd rather be the one who's doing the automating because remember, computers are just dumb by themselves. They have to be programmed. So you can be sure that if your child knows how to program, they will have a job because you're going to be increasingly needing people who can code. So our first reason here is simply learn to program because every job is likely to have some kind of component, at least of understanding, at least so that you can talk to the tech team. But it's also the area of growth and a place that your child can get a good job. I know one, one of my programming students, um, online students, before she was even finished at college, had got a job at our local gas utility, and she's now working for them full time. So here is now our second quote that we're gonna unpack. Learning to write programs stretches your mind and helps you think better. 
creates a way of thinking about things that I think is helpful in all domains, Bill Gates. And this was alluded to just now also on that um, infographic. And people are understanding more and more that programming is, is all about problem solving. Learning to code, learning the coding is, is just one part of it. But what happens is you, so for instance, in the classes I teach, I will tell the children that we're going to be writing a program um, to make a hangman gay. Now, immediately you could be overwhelmed, like, oh, wow, I don't even know where to start. But I teach them to break it down into smaller tasks. And this can apply to so much of the rest of life. So for hangman, I would say to them, well, let's think about it. What do we need? Well, on the one hand, we need to have somebody to put in the word that's going to be guessed, or the computer needs to find a word from a bank of words. So that's your first one. Secondly, you need to have a gallows designed. So you need to actually draw that out and figure out how you're going to be drawing it. Thirdly, you need to give the person playing it the opportunity to enter in a letter. Now, when they've done entered that letter, now you start to have to say, well, this is the letter. Is it in the word? So they need to compare it. How are they going to do that? Well, take the word that they're guessing. Then you need to know how, how long the word is. So there's another thing, that another little small task, because you have to like show on the screen the number of dashes for how many letters there are. So you need to do that. But then you need to literally check through each single letter of the word and see, is that is that letter in it? And if it is, then you need to write it in in the right place. And if it isn't, you need to go across to your gallows and draw the gallows. And so you continue and you put that into a loop. And when you break it down into smaller little areas and your child, the child goes off and programs each piece at a time, make sure it works and then adds them all together. This huge big task of creating a game becomes manageable. And think about how this translates into life. Whatever problems that you're coming into or whatever tasks has to have to be done, we've just moved house, it's huge and daunting until you say, okay, let's break this down. What do we have to start to do now? What do we have to do closer to the time? What do we need to do after we've moved? Even for me, doing um, these three talks that I'm doing for this conference seemed daunting until I sat down and broke it down into the smaller parts and did it piece by piece. So it, it's, I find today so many times children run away from things that are a little hard, a little big to do, and teaching them to code gets them over the fear of something that just seems too impossible. Coding also, they're going to see that they'll try something and it won't work. They learn that there's more than one way to solve a problem. So they'll have to go and perhaps say, okay, well, that way didn't work. I wonder, is there a different way I could do it? Let's try this way. They learn to think outside the box. And of course, you learn to persevere. I see a big problem in the kids that even taking my classes who often just want to quit as soon as they can't get the code to work. We are living in an increasingly soft society. When things don't work out and things start to get hard, it's easy to say, oh, I'm no good at coding. I'm just going to give up. I don't want to keep trying and trying. And they don't just do this with coding, but anything else that's a little hard. You may be learning to crochet or to knit and you don't get the hang of it straight away. Perseverance, which is inevitable that you're going to have to persevere with, with coding, is, is, a, is something that you really do want to be teaching your kids to say that it's not going to work the first time. It might not even work the tenth time, but just keep on going. And that feeling of success when your game eventually works, when your program eventually runs, it's amazing. And most classes that you take or whatever you do online with programming will take your child slowly through it so they'll have small little wins, easy things to do, and then progressively get harder and harder. There's just one thing I'd say that when they do learn to code, there are a lot of free options out there, and I'll even be showing you some just at the end briefly, but it's sometimes worth um, paying for help because if your child is just using a free site to learn and they get stuck, there is no help with a free class. Um, when it's just one of these ones we go on and work through it. Now, some children manage that fine and they'll Google and the, and if you or your husband or if it's a husband watching, you and your wife can actually help your child, obviously that would be fine. But otherwise, children may just become frustrated when they can't get something to work and when there's no one to turn to, they may give up. So that is one reason why I would say perhaps look for a live class or an online class where there is actually someone to help you. Other things that you actually will learn through programming is logic. 
the computer does what it's told. And initially children really struggle with the fact that the computer will only do what it tells it to do, just not anything else. And so sitting there and learning algorithmic thinking, sitting down and planning and plotting and telling something to do something in a specific order, to be logical, to think, how am I going to tell the computer to do this so it only does this and not something else? It's excellent brain training. And, um, and obviously it's computational thinking uh, is, is another factor to the whole thing. And then finally, it actually is creative. Computer programming, yes, you have to know how to tell the computer what to do, but just think of what you can create. When students suddenly start to understand that they can make anything, it is an amazing experience for them. I, I currently have a student in a Scratch programming class who had no interest in doing Scratch at all. In fact, I got her to do it simply because I wanted her to compete in our Science Olympia team and there is a, um, a category and one of the events is, is Scratch programming. Um, so she did it very reluctantly just because I was desperate. And she's discovered she actually loves it. Now she's very, very creative. She loves um, drama and acting. She enjoys writing. She enjoys public speaking. So she was not thinking that programming was her thing. Well, she's discovered it really is because she can be as creative with the games that she makes and she's making fantastic games as she is when she's, she's creating a brilliant speech. And on to our third quote. As an educator that teaches full stack web development, I've taught many first time programmers. And the good news is that I've rarely found a student that couldn't learn to program. I see it as a basic human skill the underlining is mine, just like reading, writing, and arithmetic. Anyone can do it. It's part of our human capacities, but does need to be learned. This is something that people are understanding more and more, is that computer programming is a skill that needs to be learned just the same way as your child needs to read and write and do math. Many parents are still saying, well, my kid's not really tech. He, he's not really good at math. He's not likely to be good at programming. So I don't think we're going to be doing any coding. I think he'll be just fine. He's, he's a very relational person or he's very, or you'll say, or she, she's very creative. This is not really our child's thing. Well, you wouldn't say that about math. Your child might not be good at math. But you know they have to learn it. You know that otherwise they're going to get cheated out a lot in life. They're not even going to be able to go into a supermarket and figure out which is the cheapest item if they can't compare different sizes, uh, you know, and a big one and a small one and look at the different prices. If they don't understand how this works, they're not going to be able to work out how long it's going to take them to drive between two cities. I mean, there's just so many things that you can't do without basic math. Likewise, you can't say, well, my child doesn't really like reading and they struggle with it, so we're just not going to worry about reading. Well, they need to learn to read because how do they read instruction manuals? How do they just read road signs? How do they just read anything? Uh, forms you have to fill out. They may never choose to read a novel in their lives, but they're going to have to read. And of course, writing is the same thing. And coding is going to be the same, whether it's just programming your smart house. And I can see our house already. Uh, so my husband just built this house. He has made it a smart house. Um, I have not yet learned all the different things, but he's busy programming everything from the blinds to the doorbell. And this is going to be the future and your child is going to need to have to learn to do just these basic things. I was thinking about how um, when Gutenberg invented the printing press, I'm sure at first most people thought this really wasn't going to affect their lives. And Writing and reading at that point was done largely in the monasteries and perhaps by some wealthy noblemen who had actually been interested enough to learn um, to do reading and writing. But it wasn't something that the average person did and learned. But of course, as the printing press started to spread affordable um, means to, to read, it became something that everyone started to have to do. And so schools came in that started to teach reading and writing and math. And it's the same with computers now becoming just the norm all over. It is a skill that our children have to learn along with it. So at this point, you may say, well, where on earth do I start? I now realize my child does need to learn to program, but I am clueless. There are, there are so many places out there. And as I said, a lot of them are free and you just need to look at your own child's abilities to decide whether or not to do the go that way. But Hour of Code, which happens now once a year, and it's been backed by many of the big names in the computer industry, 
is a fun way to start and even though it happens in December um, it's just basically an hour all around the world where they encourage everyone to spend an hour coding you can actually try out the different activities at any time and they are free um, I would suggest that as a parent you get over your own fear perhaps of coding and try it out with your child I have done the hour of code live in our local city uh, quite often and I encourage the parents to come and try as well and they are so surprised at how fun it is all of these activities here will take about an hour to do and you can see the ones for pre-readers and all the different grade levels you can also do it on all different types of technology even there are things you can do with coding that do not involve computers or devices so those are offline activities and in fact as I'm saying that you can also buy board games now if you just go onto Amazon and type in coding games you will see a number of them that teach the same skills and there are fun apps and things to do it but here you can even say well my child really likes art and media and music you could pick a topic here and then they'll have one like dance party which you learn to code but with something that your child is actually interested in so it makes it fun you can see he's busy flossing there um, you can make mazes and you've got all these different types of ways to learning. Um, Scratch is a really easy to learn language and that's one that they have they have there for and it's one of the ones that I teach as well. So this is a good place to start is to just come and play around on the Hour of Code. And then I have to just mention my own academy. I do have and in fact you will find inside your swag bag I have given you free our just four module intro to game programming class this is self-paced and um, you do have help though because normally it costs twenty dollars and so you you're getting it free because you came to the conference if your child does get stuck you can message me or if there are any teaching assistants in the class and we will help them it is just four modules the first one is game design the next one is how to do game graphics so neither of those are directly related to coding but then the third one actually uses some of the hour of code you won't find it easily on the website but some of their resources to teach game logic and then we finally end up in scratch for a week doing some basic programming um, and then after that i actually have scratch classes either semester long ones or divided into five week the five week ones are self-paced semester long ones um, do have deadlines um, and then there's also Python, which is a good intro language for children who've already started doing some coding or if they're in high school and it's a real language. Um, and we do, I do have, there is help in all of those classes. But you could also look for um, your library may teach uh, some coding classes. You can go to your Apple store and they will do some app programming. I know that they do some of that free and you can just look around and find something and start somewhere start small don't do anything too scary but start uh, the world isn't going to change it's only going to become more and more full of code and the quicker you get in there and start being scared and start having fun alongside your kids the better for all of you and as i said you can start really young scratch as scratch junior for younger children there are apps that are fine for just this beyond the scope of this particular talk but there are plenty of ways to easily get get going if you want to find me and um, there will also be in in the handout um, that there will also be more information about where you can find me but i do have a a podcast called homeschooling with technology where i'm not just talking about programming and coding but just all types of technology funder funder academy is where i teach online and then if you have teens you may want to join the uh, college bound teens homeschool and college bound teens facebook group where we talk about all things college hope this has been helpful to you and feel free to reach out to me at meryl at funderfunder.com if i can help you in any way